Welcome back to another session in the course FEA using SOLIDWORKS. In the previous session, we had performed a simple static and dynamic analysis. In this session, we will be performing a 1D, 2D and 3D FEA analysis on a uniformly loaded cantilever beam. You see, FEA analysis is classified into 1D, 2D and 3D analysis depending on the type of elements we will be using. But what are these elements? We had previously seen how models are discretized into splitting it into multiple elements and depending upon the shape and type of the models, different types of elements are used for discretization. The simplest element which we can have is a line connecting two nodes. This can either be a straight or curved line. So whenever we have a line as an element, it is considered as a 1D element. The image that you are seeing on your screen is a 1D mesh of a simple cantilever beam in SOLIDWORKS. Here, the cuboid beam is simplified into a single line and is discretized into many parts. If we discretize using surface elements such as triangles or rectangles, then it is considered as a 2D element. 2D meshing is generally done in SOLIDWORKS using the shell option. The image shown on your screen is a 2D mesh of the same beam which we used for 1D meshing. and if we use solids like tetrahedrons or cuboids for discretization, it is considered as a 3D element. These elements are used to discretize 3D models and mesh them. We shall look into each of these types individually. The first one is 1D analysis. 1D analysis is used when one of the dimensions of the geometry for which we are performing FEA is significantly larger than the other dimension. An example for this would be, let's say I have a long uniform beam and I am interested in looking at deformation caused by bending. Since the beam is long enough, 1D elements are sufficient to produce the required result. Going for 1D analysis instead of 3D in this case would give an accurate result and also reduce the computational time required. 1D analysis can be used for structures such as beams, bars, rods, pipes, etc. in which one dimension is significantly larger than the other two. After this, we have the 2D analysis. This is usually performed when two dimensions of the geometry are significantly bigger than the third one. Examples for this are sheet metals and plastic components such as instrument panels. So if you want to perform an FEA analysis on a sheet metal, then instead of using 3D cuboids, you can get a result of high accuracy by just using 2D sheet elements which are called as shell elements. Using 2D elements instead of 3D elements will reduce the computational time required. And after this we have the 3D analysis. We will use this when any one dimension is not significantly greater or smaller than the other ones. Using 3D elements would also give you the most accurate result but it would also increase the computational time required. Now we will be doing FEA analysis of a cantilever beam using 1D, 2D and 3D elements. I had explained that since a beam is a structure with one dimension significantly larger than the others, doing 1D analysis would provide us with accurate results. So now we will actually perform the analysis and see how much the value differs by solving the same problem in different ways. So I have the SOLIDWORKS interface open here. So let me press Ctrl plus N. This will give us a new SOLIDWORKS document. Here I'll go ahead and double click on part. This should give us the part interface. Okay, so we'll start with the sketch screen. Here let me click on sketch and I'll select the right plane. And from this I'll select a center rectangle and make a rough rectangle from the center. Now let me just go to smart dimensions and here we are making a square cantilever beam and our square has a dimension of 30 millimeters on both sides. So I'll just add the same values there. So I'll mark this one side as 30 and press OK. I'll do the same for the other side also. It's 30 and OK. And I'll be directly going to features and give extrude boss or base. And now I will extrude the sketch up to 500 millimeters. Click on OK. Okay, so we have our model here. Let's go into SOLIDWORKS add-ins and activate the simulation license. Okay, so simulation has gotten activated. Let me just go ahead and press on simulation option. And now I'll select new study. And for now we will be performing a static analysis. 
so i'll select static and make it a static 1d and now i'll change it as static 3t and i'll press ok now i'll right click on part and i'll apply the default alloy steel material or you can always uh, apply whichever material you would like when you're performing the simulation yourselves we'll just wait for that dialog box to open okay so we have our material dialog box open here i'll just select alloy steel and hit apply now let's just close it and our next course of action would be to set the fixtures here uh, select fixed geometry by right clicking on fixtures since this is a cantilever beam only one side of the entire beam will be fixed so i'll just select the left side of the beam and press ok so i'll be fixing this side i'll press ctrl 7 to go to isometric view here our next action would be to give external loads to it as i just previously said this is a uniformly loaded cantilever beam so the amount of load is uniformly distributed about a specific face and we will be applying the force on the top face of this beam so i'll just select the face and select 1000 newtons of force that means one kilonewton and the direction is correct so we don't need to reverse it it's downwards and i'll press ok let's just hit mesh and run okay so the solver has finished solving it and the maximum one misses stress developed in the model is at this area and it is about 5.459 into 10 past 7 newton per meter square uh, we'll run another 2d and 1d analysis of this same beam and we'll check how much stress we will be developing and we'll just compare the other two okay so to run a 1d analysis we'll just go to model and uh, hit on new study from this we'll change this instead of static 2 i'll make it a static 1d and i'll uh, let it be selected in static and let's press ok let's apply the default alloy steel material which we have applied for the previous one also i'll just hit apply and i'll be closing it now our next course of action would be to define this 3d beam as a beam element so to do that i'll just right click on part and select the treat as beam option now you can see that we have two separate nodes which appear over here uh, the meaning of this is that instead of it being a 3d beam element we've just converted it into a 1d beam element so our next work would be to set the fixtures here let's go to fixed geometry and select that one now i selected the joint and i'll press ok and next we'll be adding the forces here you cannot define forces to the faces since this is just a 1d element we can't do faces because faces are 2d to apply force to this model you need to select on the beams option and then select the entire beam and this way the solver will know where exactly you are giving the force so since we are giving the force to the entire beam we are selecting the entire beam so the next action would be to set the face along which we are applying the beam applying the force so the next option would be to set the direction along which we are applying the force here i'll select this edge and use this to define the direction so i'll just give select on force and change it into say one 1000 since we gave 1000 newtons in our previous 3d analysis 3d static study we're going to give 1000 here also and we'll check the direction the arrow mark is actually pointing downwards so this is fine uh, we don't need to reverse the direction which is wanted downwards only uh, i'll press ok now let's just mesh the model just click on create mesh okay so here you can see that instead of having a 3d mesh the solver has made a simple 1d mesh and this will significantly reduce the computational time for us now i'll just select on run this study and let the solver do it okay, so the study has finished and we have our results here now let's do a 2d analysis of the same model so i'll go to model again and i'll select the new study then instead of static 3 i'll change it into static 2d and i'll select ok here under parts let's just apply the same alloy steel i'll press apply and close here to define this entire beam 
as a 2D shell element, what we need to do is right click on part 1 and we need to select the option define shell by selected faces. Now I'll just go ahead and select it now. Now here you need to select a certain face on our 3D object. I'll be selecting the side face here and here I'll input my value as 30 millimeters. Now the shell will be offset by a value. Now the face will be offset by a value of around 30 millimeters. I'll press on OK. Now we need to fix it. We need to fix geometry. So in our previous one, we had a 3D element. We had a 3D uh, cantilever beam which was moving up and down in the animation. Now we just have a simple sheet metal which is bending down and up. So this is to denote that this is as this is taken as a shell element. So we are not going to uh, give an entire face. We are just going to give this one edge because this edge is what we defined as a shell element. Select OK. And for external loads, we are doing the same. We are only selecting this one specific word edge and the direction would be downwards. So to set the direction, I need to select this vertex. Now I'll select on force. Okay, so the direction is by default selected as downwards. So we just need to define the value of force. We'll make it as 1000 newtons. And select OK. Now we need to mesh the model. I'll select create mesh. And we'll give the default one. So here you can see that our model is actually meshed and it is a 3D element instead of being, sorry, it is a 2D element instead of being a 3D element. Uh, don't worry about these arrow marks. They should be along the entire length of the beam. Uh, this is just a small graphical glitch which occurs sometimes in SOLIDWORKS. It is actually defined for the entire length of the beam. Okay, so now that we have everything required, we'll just run the study now. Okay, so now that we have the results for our 2D analysis, let's go ahead and compare for all three of these analysis. So to do that, we just need to right click on results and select the compare results option. Here, you need to select the all studies in this configuration radio button. So once you select that, what happens is that the software will consider all the different results that we have obtained in each of these simulations. So we don't want to compare all of them. We'll just compare the displacements at the moment. So I'll select displacement in all of them. I'll checkbox them and I'll select OK. So here you can see that the screen has been split into four different places. So here we have the 3D model of the 2D simulation. So we just, this is, just ignore this part. And here we have our three different results. So the first one is our 3D analysis. The second one is the 2D analysis. And the third one is the 1D analysis. Here you can see that the maximum deflection in each of these is somewhat much similar to each other of them. So here it is 1.102 millimeters. Here it is 1.103 millimeters. And here it is 1.107 millimeters. So this is how we perform a 1D, 2D and a 3D analysis. So to exit this, you just need to select the exit compare. I'll just go ahead and select this one and we are back to our first analysis in these options. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, let's have a quick summary of all the contents that we looked into in this video. Okay, so we're back to our PPT. So in the beginning, we, we looked into the different classifications of FEA. Then we discussed on what are 1D, 2D and 3D elements and where exactly we use 1D simulation, 2D simulation and 3D simulation. And we also performed a 1D, 2D and 3D simulation work of a uniformly loaded cantilever beam in our SOLIDWORKS simulation module. And in the end, we had a small comparison of our results. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you have understood how to perform a 1D, 2D and 3D simulation. I'll meet you in the next one.